Hello, welcome to Recall Gaming Exploits. Sorry for the delay in the videos, but uh, recently got a puppy. So, obviously, uh, with the whole house training, the dog, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta take some time to do that. It takes time and effort, and obviously at the moment, with recently being away from its uh, brothers and sisters and the mum and dad dogs and all that, um, obviously it's a bit... Um, Lonely. Well, it, it it does not be left alone at all. Like you leave the room for five minutes, starts yelping and moaning you, and I can't really have it up in uh, in the bedroom where the PC is at the moment. So I haven't been able to record much. Um, so many apologies for that. Uh, hopefully things will sort of start picking back up very soon. Uh, dog's name is Max. Uh, I'll probably post a picture up here. He's as dopey as he looks. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. What, what I want to talk about today is uh, mid-range market games. I mean, years and years ago, like this this game here is uh, the mobile port. Essentially, it's the same version as what's on iOS and Android, uh, unfortunately. And it got ported to the PC. But this is Speedball 2 HD. Now, Speedball 2 was a... Like, it, it was a game with a huge cult following. It was a bit of a hit, in a way. Uh, it was a low-budget title. Struck a struck a chord with, a few, with quite a few people out there, quite a few gamers, and uh, actually made a lot of money. And that's Speedball. I was a fan of it when I was a kid, so this is like a bit of my childhood here. And uh, it's, it's, it's a unique like, little game. It's a, it's a blood sport game where you're in a dystopian future. And essentially, you know, uh, what's more valuable in this dy dystopian future? Uh, your well-being or um, the entertainment of others? And in the future, in this future, it's the entertainment of others. So people basically go out into these death rings where, like, you know, in a world where everything's gone to shit, people just like to see some violence. And that's what um, Speedball is. It's basically rugby cross, American football cross. There's practically no rules. So it's like prison rules rugby. Which, uh, if there is such a thing, oh my god, the amount of fatalities. That would occur. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, you don't get games like this no more. Mid range market games. I mean, nowadays everything's got to be a AAA release. And I know I mentioned this in a previous video, but everything's got to be a AAA release. Everything's got to be in the, the next hit. It's got to be the next Assassin's Creed, the next Call of Duty, the next Battlefield. Um, everything's got to be a hit. And never used to be like that. If, uh, if back in the PS1 era, uh, everything had to be here. Big budget tile. Um, we wouldn't have games like Tony Hawk's Guitar Hero. We wouldn't have games like Speedball. Um, Mutant League, I think, was another one that was incredibly awesome. Uh, Fever Pitch was another one on the uh, Mega Drive that I quite liked. Rampage World Tour. Um, we wouldn't have Guitar. Uh, we wouldn't have um, Grand Theft Auto. Either. Grand Theft Auto, when it originally came out, was not a big budget title. It was actually developed by accident. There was a, um, it was actually creating a uh, racing game you get chased by police. So like a 2D old school Need for Speed, where you'd just be in a street race, and but it'd be a linear track, and the police would chase you. Well, there was a bug where rather than just apprehending you, the, car, the police cars just ran you the hell off the track. And um, Rockstar thought this was kind of fun. Obviously, I weren't called Rockstar at the time. But uh, they thought it was quite fun, so they decided to make an entire open world game about it on next to no budget. And then we got our Grand Theft Auto series, one of the most successful series in the history of gaming. So, I mean, you, you look at all these hit games, there's so many different hit games that were just budget titles in the beginning, and they end up being huge. Uh, Mortal Kombat was not a high budget title, we had a very s small development team. Um, they used digitised actors. There was only about like five actors for all the characters in the game. It was like, I mean, palette swaps is the classic thing. You got palette swaps. So like Sub Zero, the guy who done Sub Zero did Scorpion and Johnny Cage. All three of them, same dude. Um, that kind of thing was commonplace uh, back then. But yeah, there's so many games that are budget titles that end up being the, some of the best, most favoured games of all time. You know why? Because they got to experiment. They got to do something differently in the game. In the game industry where the AAA market is literally only AAA massive hit, massive budget games. It's high budget, low risk. It's got to have the same conventions, the same things that they've uh, tried and tested. Things that they've tried and tested and know that gamers like. Which is why we're getting a lot of games with 
RPG mechanics in it. Every game has RPG mechanics in it. Everything is an RPG hybrid nowadays. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that you know the whole Assassin's Creed formula, the the Ubisoft formula is the be best example really. You go on open world map, here's some towers. Get the towers, open up the rest of the map, um, unlock new story missions, hidden content, blah blah blah. blah. It's, everyone's played an Ubisoft game. If you played Far Cry, you've played Assassin's Creed. If you played Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, then you've played Watch Dogs. If you played Watch Dogs and Far Cry, then you've played Assassin's Creed. It's um. You know, it's all a mix mash of each other, every single game, and I wouldn't be surprised if the division has some towers in it that you go and go climb or activate to unveil some of the maps, some of the dark zones or whatever. So you you get the idea. I mean, the ghost, the, the next Ghost Recon game, I can't remember what it's called. It was announced at E3. That's blatantly got that same formula. So these formulaic games, formulaic tiles that like, just copy paste each other in their features, in their design philosophy. If that makes sense. Like, they've got this basic design flow that they use for every game at Ubisoft. Because uh, it's tried, tested, it's proven to be popular and people will buy it. But with that becomes stagnation. And with that it just brings like you know uh, less interest in the market. It brings pe makes people depressed. In, but, you know, it, the game of the future doesn't look bright anymore. It just looks like the same world trodden path. Over and over and over again. Final Fantasy 7 would have never happened if they didn't push the boat out and experiment. It's the first RPG that had 3D graphics in it and it shows. It looks like shit now. At the time it looked amazing. Shockingly. Because no one never seen anything like it. Well, you can't have any games where no one's seen anything like it if you don't experiment. And that's what the mid-range market was. The budget titles. They had the freedom to try new things but they had low budgets. But once something was tried, and then also tested when the game's released and proved popular, then it would get implemented by other games or future games in the series. Siphon Filter, I think, was another game that was a budget title. Metal Gear Solid may even be a game that was a budget title. There's so many different great games that were like made on low budgets compared to like the top games of their time. And it just it's just so depressing to see that we've got this stagnation. That's why the rise of the indie market has come to try and fill the gap. It fills the void. The Hotline Miamis and the, the Thomas Was Alone and just a Portal, even though it weren't really indie. There's tons and tons and tons of indie games out there. This War of Mine uh, is another example. Grey Goo. Um, filling gaps in the market that we don't have. That's how we've got our Amnesia, how we got our Outlast. Because, you know, survival horror is dead, basically, in AAA market. Um, it's just there to fill that gap. And we need more of it, but we need the big studios to start putting out more of these games and just giving them that little extra push in just a little bit of, a little bit of investment. That's all I need, just a little bit of investment. Uh, I mean, it just seems like they've forgotten how much money was made on the mid range market. It's a shame. It's a shame that that's happened. But yes, yeah, Speedball 2, Dystopian Future Blood Sports, is a game that we'll never see. We will never ever see, see a game like this ever again. And it sucks. But yeah. I'm going to go now. But it's been good being back, making a video and stuff. Again, it's been a while. But I will I'll hopefully get back on it on a more regular basis very soon. And then we'll have more videos and more stuff to do. But until then, I'll be able to try and potty train a dog and uh, <laughs> and then try and do videos as and when I can. So there'll still be content coming out, just not exactly sure when. Okay. Thank you for watching Recall Game Next Boys. There's stuff you have a chance to see you do. I will be putting up videos, watching space. Goodbye. <laughs>